Italians don't work and they're lazy. Because do you know which is the most common benefit <laughs> to have a job in Italy? Oh hi, you're also here for the fashion marketing internship. It's your curious and awkward friend Vasi. In this video I want to look at different cases. What if you're an expat? What if you're an entrepreneur? Or what if you want to work 9 to 5? Which one is better for you? Should you go to work in Italy or to the UK? What are the pros and cons of both countries and which one is better for you? You guys don't hate me but we kind of need to start from the boring legal part. Yeah, I know, I also don't like it, but we kind of have to. First case, if you're an Italian that comes to the UK after 1st of January 2021, you need to get a visa. And to get one of these, there is like this big point system and you need to meet certain requirements such as uh, education, level of English and also what are your skills. So it's not really easy, but it's also not impossible. However, if you came into the UK before 1st of January this year, you just need to apply for a settlement or pre-settlement status, which I also have because it's actually for all European citizens. If you're a Brit that went to live in Italy before January 2021, then in this case you need to apply for a biometric residence card, which is quite easy to obtain. It's similar to the settlement status here in the UK. And just a reminder to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this type of content or if you want to see more videos from London. So we thought if you're planning to go and work uh, in any of the two countries, it's kind of good to know which are the growing sectors in both of them, right? Right! Yes, Vasi, you're totally right. So in the UK, the growing sectors according to LinkedIn, my friend, I don't think he knows that I'm his friend, but they are e-commerce, healthcare, digital content freelancers, construction, creative freelancers and finance. But of course that doesn't mean that you cannot find a job in any other industry, like I'm working in fashion and fashion has been going very bad, but still if you're good and you have the skills, you can still find a job. Working in Italy, what industries come to your mind? Let me know in the comments down below. But I bet one of the top industries are fashion, design and maybe food. But the reality is it comes to also everyone's mind. So this kind of leads to very competitive job market in those industries. And I'm not saying that it's impossible because there are many people that still work in fashion and I also did, but I'm just saying it's harder than what you think. I actually suggest you looking more into the jobs where there is a shortage at the moment. And these are uh, teaching professionals, like you could be an English teacher, which are in really high demand. You could work in marketing or any creative industry. Let's talk about having a regular 9 to 5 job in Italy. It's very important to know that you need a high proficiency in Italian pretty much no matter what your job is and it's very hard to get a normal 9 to 5 job if you don't speak the local language. I mean, just think about it. If you come to the UK, would you really get a job if you don't speak English? I don't think so, but from the other side, also British people don't really mind if you have an accent when you speak. The first stereotype which I really want to beat is that Italians don't work and they're lazy. Because at least from my experience in Milan is that people do work really hard and also most of the time I have ended up working overtime in Italy. So yeah, this is really not true. The thing is, there is kind of a lack of organization and um, just a structure in the company, which usually pretty much all UK companies have. In Italy, they're still kind of very traditional in the sense that if you go into any office and you don't know anyone, you would still be able to pick and say which is the boss because everyone treats him as the most authoritative person and the fact of like having your boss as your friend also in 
Italy in general, companies are slower into adopting technology, new technologies or systems. Imagine in Italy I would spend like three hours doing a job when here in the companies that I work it's just automated and it takes like two minutes for you to do it. We pay high taxes, like really, really high. So if you go there and you have a permanent job, be ready that pretty much almost half of your sal salary would go for paying taxes, which, which is just crazy. From the other side, if you decide to work in the UK, well, first of all here, of course, the salaries are a lot higher and the taxes are lower and you do get a lot more benefits from what I have seen in my experience. Oh my God, I didn't tell you. Do you know which is the most common benefit? <laughs> to have a job in Italy. Bonipasto! <laughs> yeah, it's called Bonipasto, which is kind of like having a meal deal every day. So you get like this voucher for food where basically they pay your lunch every day. I mean, it's kind of good and I would say very Italian. If you work in the UK, there are a lot more international companies and overall you're way more likely to progress faster in your career. Because as I said, Italy is a very traditional country. So for you uh, to progress in your career, they really want you to go in every single step for a long time before they actually promote you. Whereas here, uh, I feel like if they see that you're good at your job, then you will get uh, to a higher position faster. Sorry guys, it's Ben again, Rhymes. Uh, yeah, I've seen like, you know, I'm looking for like jobs on, in one, you know, as a motion designer. And, like, it's funny how I see like junior positions that require four years of work experience. Yeah. Then I'm like, oh, hi. You guys, this is based on the real story. And Facts. <laughs> oh, hi. You're also here for the fashion marketing internship. Yes, I am. I'm so excited for this. In this will be my first internship. Ah, uh, okay. So, uh, are you still studying or...? Yeah, yeah, I'm studying. Oh. I'm 19 years old and I I'm actually in my first year. Oh, alright. Well, let me tell you something, girl. I already graduated and I have a master's plus I already done some internships. Oh, like you have graduated? Yes, yes, I have. And I also, don't like, I also have more experience. Oh, no! I feel like I'm not gonna get this internship. If you're kind of a rebellious expat and you don't want to go to Bali or Thailand or Southeast Asia because this seems to be a very popular one, then I would really suggest you looking into going to the south of Italy. Yes, this might sound a little bit odd, but hear me out. You will be in Europe, especially if you're from the UK, so you will be closer to home. But at the same time, Italy has introduced new laws according to which in the first nine years you pay a flat tax rate of only 7%. And as you can imagine, the cost of living is really low and you would spend almost no money on food, but you would live the good Italian Dolce Vita life. You guys, exactly you, expats and also potential expats in Italy. You know how I told you that they don't really speak English in the south of Italy? And you might have some common problems with other expats. So the best solution for you is actually joining this group expats in Italy where you can find other English native speakers or foreigners that are basically facing the same problems as you. So you can post in there any questions that you have or just join the discussion and it would solve any small issue that you might have. I wouldn't really say that the UK is great for expats because the cost of living is really high and they don't have the same incentives as they have in Italy. However, if you're an entrepreneur and you want to start your own business, then the UK would be the right place for you. It's actually rated as the best country in Europe for where to start a business. And I would say one of the worst places to do that would be in Italy because there's so much bureaucracy and also very high taxes. Don't forget to subscribe and see you in my next one. Ciao!